Hey y'all, welcome to or welcome back to Dave's Techway, whichever way the situation may be. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at an aftermarket cooler. We're going to be looking at the Cooler Master Hyper T4. We're going to be comparing that to the stock cooler that comes with the Ryzen 5 2400G, which is the Wraith Stealth Cooler. And we're going to see if the T4 is actually worth the $25 or so that you're going to spend on it if you decide to go with one. And also, I'm going to show you how to install it onto the AM4 platform. I'll be right back. Alright all, like I said in the intro, today we're going to be taking a look at an aftermarket CPU cooler. It's the Cooler Master Hyper T4 cooler. Here's the specs of the system that we're going to be putting it on. We're going to be running the Cooler Master Hyper T4 CPU cooler or the Wraith Stealth cooler that comes with the Ryzen 5. I have put it in the Cooler Master Half X Evo case, which there'll be an upcoming video on uh, transplanting that into it. For storage, we got a 3 terabyte hard drive. We got a 1 terabyte hard drive. The memory is 8 gigs of Viper by Patriot. We also run in a Kingston uh, SSD 240 gig. Uh, we're running a Ryzen 5 2400G with Vega 11 graphics. We have a Corsair 550 watt 80 plus bronze certified non-modular power supply. And we have the Gigabyte B450 motherboard. That's what the uh, components is in this system if you're wondering what makes up the system. Have you seen any of my other 2400G videos I've had out. It's pretty. It's the same exact system. I used this cooler in a customer's build. So now I reordered the parts for this system um, to do the overclocking videos and whatnot. So I'm going to actually end up using these. It's a very good upgrade compared to what I've been running. So I am going to use it as my daily driver. But that ain't why you're here. Today we're going to be going over the installation and the temperatures that you can expect out of the Hyper T4. So here we go, here's a little video I got for you. It's showing me taking off the uh, heat sink, you know, the uh, one that comes with it. You know, you first uh, take the four screws out of the corners, you know, um, if you, if you, if you buy this cooler and you're going to use it on a new build, you won't have to do all this. Um, because it comes with the old AM3 brackets on it that the T4 will automatically connect to. This video right here is showing you if you've already got the stock heat sink on it, the steps of uh, removing it to be able to put it on the Hyper T4. Um, to put on these uh, stock heat sinks, a lot of times you got to take them two little brackets off the side to be able to get these to screw down into the back plate. Of the motherboard. If you use the Hyper T4 out of the box when you do your build, you won't have to remove the stock heat sink like this. You won't have to worry about removing the thermal paste because there won't be none on it. Um, if you use it on a new build without having to remove the heat sink, then you know it comes with its own little bit of thermal paste. It's enough to cover the CPU. But right here, I'm just kind of going over and uh, removing the thermal paste that I had on the stock heat sink. Um, here in a second I'll show you what I'm using. There's what I'm using. They're just actual al alcohol pads. Instead of using these pads, I don't recommend you going out and buying these pads. You know, you just use some regular alcohol from your store shelf. Of course, the higher the uh, alcohol content, the better it is for removing the thermal paste. As you can tell, I've went through several pads to remove this. It does take a while to get it removed. You know, you can use a coffee filter. I usually use a Q-tip to begin with, with alcohol on it, to get them going. And then once I get the major stuff off, I'll take a coffee filter, because it don't leave no fibers behind. And I'll go over top of it with rubbing alcohol with a coffee filter to make sure I get it nice and clean. These little pads do come in handy if you have any. If you have any handy. Still clean. All right, here, here I'm telling you about the brackets and how to put the brackets back onto the motherboard. Like I said, if you use one of these coolers out of the box, you have to make sure them little black clips right there is facing the right direction, which is out away from the CPU. 
if you if you're building fresh on a new motherboard without the stock heat sink on it you can skip this step because the motherboard comes with these brackets already installed you just have to clip it down onto it but me I had the stock heat sink on it so I had to remove it and I'm just getting the one clip on here right now the one side bracket I'm gonna gotta replace it that's why if you ever see my build videos using these motherboards I say always to hold on to these because some of the aftermarket coolers do use these brackets even though the stock heat sinks don't though I am uh, replacing the second one it replaces just like the first one does but I did record it and I don't want anybody to say well I didn't see you put the second one on yeah well there it is tighten down the screws on it Uh, here's the thermal paste. If you notice, I put uh, put way too much thermal paste on it this time. Uh, you know, there's different methods of installing this. Is one way better than the other one? I don't know. If you've seen any of my other videos, I spread mine out, and this is why I spread it out because I put way too much on it. And you'll see here in a second where I actually take the excess and wipe the excess off, and then I continue the application of thermal paste because. That's just way too much. I mean, that stuff would have spread it all over everything. And you don't want that. You don't need that. Actually putting too much thermal paste on them is worse, just as bad, if not worse, than not having enough thermal paste on them. So you want to make sure you just get a nice thin coating on them. You know, just enough to cover up their writing. Or you can do the piece size drop, and hopefully the heat spreader spreads it out the right, to the right what you need. But... And like I said, if you see my other videos, you know I like to spread mine out. Here I go, including the bracket into the heat sink itself. You got to fit through there. Sometimes this can be a little bit challenging to get these through there because there ain't a whole lot of room. But you just wiggle it around till you get it. And when you get it through there, you need to make sure you have this. Well, hold on. Where is it at? I'm just making sure it's in the right orientation here. And see if I get a better shot of it here. Yeah, I did show a good shot of it. But you want to make sure you get that little, in the bracket that holds it down, there's a little clip you got to get down in the middle of it. From this point on, it pretty well goes on like any heat sink from an AM3, AM, FM2, FM2 Plus motherboard has. Um, I had to take the fan off there for I could get, get it hooked down in. I don't know if I get a close up over here or not of me putting it on the clips. Let's see here. Uh, you can kind of tell on that, on this hand right here closest to me that I'm kind of struggling with it to get it down on them little clips. But it's pretty self-explanatory. It's pretty easy to get this thing installed. I don't like the orientation that this thing installs on, which I went over that in my previous video of the uh, Q300L build. I don't like the orientation of this cooler, but it does do a, it does seem to do a lot better job than the stock heat sink, which I'll get into after I show you the installation of it. Then you just clip your fan back onto it. It's it's pretty simple, pretty straightforward process to get this thing connected. And just to make it look a little bit better here, once I get the fan connected, I just kind of run the fan cable underneath of the heat sink itself back to the fan plug-in. There we go. Running the cable underneath just to make it look better. You really wouldn't have to do this. You could leave it around the outside if you want to. Me, I like my systems to look good. And that just kind of helps cover up that, that their cable. Pull the cable through and you just plug the fan back into it. Back into your CPU header on the motherboard. And just like that, it's installed. That's the end of the video. That's all there is to it, guys. All right, all. 
Now since we uh, went through the installation of it and I showed you how to install the Hyper T4, I got some uh, numbers here to show you on the performance of it. Alright, on the left hand side here we got the stock heat sink and on the right hand side here we got the Hyper, the, uh, Hyper T4 by Cooler Master. Um, now on both these tests I ran Prime 95 for 15 minutes and I also had Heaven Benchmark running in the background. The iGPU, I was running on the processor and I had Heaven Benchmark running in the background. Which Prime 95, yes, Prime 95 runs your CPU at 100% on all cores or all threads 100% of the time. It is a very unrealistic workload. Nobody ever runs the computer this hard. Um, but it's a good stress tester. I use it a lot for uh, testing used uh, CPU when I do used builds. And even on new builds, I like doing it to test the temperature to make sure it's going to be stable. You know, use it for overclocking, which I'm not big on overclocking, but if you're going to, you know, you need to stress test that CPU hard to be able to make sure you got a stable overclock. But I also had a heaven benchmark in the background at 1550 megahertz, which was my overclock on my IGPU on this processor. So this this processor was under a lot of stress for this 15 minutes. Why I went with 15 minutes is because within 15 minutes it hit the max temperatures, and then they actually started slowing back down some. You know, the temperature started dropping, so that showed me that it wasn't going to run no harder than that. And even on both of these uh, both these pictures here that you're looking at, you know, you can see the current temperature, the minimum temperature, and the max temperature on both of them. You know, and the current temperature, which is represented here on the left on both of them, is lower than what the max temperature is. So 15 minutes, it was as hard as it was going to run. So we ain't going to pay too much attention to them numbers. Um, there in the middle, on the stock, it got the lowest it got was 39, and on the T4, the lowest it got was 30. What you really need to look at is at the end of the 15 minutes, the stock heat sink let it get up to 85 degrees Celsius. Uh, with the Cooler Master T4, it only got up to 73 max. That's a 12, 12 degrees difference. I mean, you know, to me, that's actually worth the $25 within itself. Um, you know, at 12 degrees, and like I stated, you know, on the stock, for some reason, if I overclock the CPU through the BIOS to 4 gigahertz, even with just Prime 95, within a few minutes, it would lock up. Normally, that is a sign of an unstable overclock, but it only done it with the heat sink that came with the Ryzen 5. 2400G. With the Hyper T4 on it, it wasn't freezing up. And it wasn't temperature related because the temperature was only showing 80 degrees every time it locked up. I can't explain this. I don't know why it was happening. But like I said, you know, normally that's an unstable overclock. But it's only happening on the stock heat sink and not the Hyper T4. The Hyper T4 ran for 15 minutes with no problems and even on the stock heat sink you've seen the high is 85 and that was pushing 3.6 gigahertz turbo went up to 3.9 they got up to 85 without locking up but yeah guys that's pretty uh, pretty well going to wrap up the video for today uh if you like what you saw here today give me a thumbs up if you didn't like what you saw give me a thumbs down you know, there's that comment section down there, guys. If there's something else you'd like to see with this motherboard, with this processor, let me know in the comment section. If I think it's worth putting out, I'll put it out. Um, if you really liked what you saw here today, make sure you hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell. That way you'll notify next time I put out a video. Until next time, you all have a good day, and I'll see you in the next video.